Hey everyone, this is Nagyan, and in this video, I'm going to show you an easy way to build WX widgets from source and link it with your project. The scope of this video is to compile WX widgets along with a simple example project, and not to teach how to code a WX widgets project. The methods I'm going to use can be applied in both platforms, be it Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. Remember that we are building WX widgets from source, not downloading binaries and linking them with our project. The main reason as to why you may want to build from source is flexibility and customization. I'm not going to discuss this in details as it is beyond the scope of this video. To get started, I'm going to the official WX widgets website and download the version of the source code that I want. I'll go for the latest development release. You can also download a release from GitHub if you want. With WX widgets source code in place, I'm going to create a directory for our project and move the directory of WX widgets there. Our project is just going to be a simple Hello World WX widgets application and its source code can be obtained from the official documentation. So yeah, let's go to their website and obtain the code of the Hello World application. The entire code can be found at the end of this page and can simply be copied and pasted. I'm going to be opening the project directory with Visual Studio Code as this is the text editor of my choice. You can use whichever editor you prefer. So let's make a C++ file and paste the code there. I'll call it main.cpp. To make it clear, we have the entire WX widgets project in a single C++ file. You can have as many source files for your project as you like. With the application's code in place, all we have to do is build and run it. We need to compile the project with WX widgets as our dependency. Now we can indeed directly invoke the compiler to compile the project. However, it's a messy and error-prone task that should be handled by a build automation tool like CMake. In a minute, you'll see how CMake makes the operation easy and clean. Moreover, it's going to work across various compilers and build tools. To let CMake build the entire project for us, we need to define what we want. All of that is specified in a file called cmakelists.txt, spelled exactly as I did. I'll keep this file at the root of my project. I'll name our project WX example. Since our project will be built to create an executable file, I'll use the add executable function to specify the name of the executable along with the source files. This will essentially instruct CMake to compile the files and create an executable. Let's try to build this project with CMake and see what happens. I'll call CMake from the command line. The dot refers to the current directory that I'm in in the shell. Next, I'll set the location of our build directory, which is where CMake will keep all the files required for the build process along with the output. In our case, the output is a single executable as we specify. Finally, CMake requires a generator that generates files for a build tool. In this case, I'll be generating files for Ninja, since this is my favorite build tool in Linux. On Windows, Microsoft Visual Studio may be an appropriate choice. And on macOS, Xcode may be the most efficient. You can run CMake with the help option to see the list of available generators on your system. As you can see, CMake doesn't compile or link the project by itself. It generates files for and invokes a build tool of your choice, compile and link the project for you. It's an automation system, not a build tool. If I run the command, all the necessary files for building the project will be generated. In my case, Ninja files will be created. If you use Microsoft Visual Studio as your generator on Windows, you'll find a Visual Studio project inside your build directory. And using it, you can build a project using Visual Studio. The same goes for Xcode on macOS. Irrespective of the generator I use, I can always let CMake invoke the build tool for me. To do so, I'll run CMake again, but this time provide the build directory only. This will make CMake invoke the build tool and build a project for us. However, we run into errors here. All this is saying is that the files of WX widgets, which is our dependency, isn't found. To resolve this, I'll look for the instructions on building our WX widgets project with CMake on the official documentation of WX widgets. The documentation says that since WX widgets is also a CMake project, we can simply add it as a subdirectory. Subdirectory is a feature of CMake and you can check the documentation of CMake to learn more. To build a project without errors, I'll add the WX widgets directory as a subdirectory. This will simply ask CMake to build WX widgets using the instructions in our own CMake file and make the output files of the build process available for our project. In other words, we're going to get the library and header files of WX widgets using it in our project. After we compile the project, we're going to be linking the WX widgets library files. You can select the components of WX widgets that you need. 
Finally, if we invoke CMake to build a project again, we'll find the build process successfully starts. I'll fast forward till it's over. Unfortunately, due to the full CPU usage by the compiler, my recording software failed to record all the steps. However, you can see the build process finished with few warnings but no error. Inside our build directory, we'll find the resulting executable, which is our simple WX widget app. Let's see how it looks like. Awesome! Works as expected. So yeah, this is how you build WX widgets from source and use it in your project. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.